Okay, in this video, we are going to integrate the flow function from 0 to 4. This right here can be easy or it can be hard. The hard part is to figure out the easy way to do it. So, let's see, let's discuss what the flow function is first. And I will demonstrate by some examples. Right here, suppose you are looking at the flow of 2.3. We are going to find the greatest integer that's less than or equal to this value here. And of course, you have 2.3. The biggest integer that's less than 2.3 is 2. The way like to think about the flow function is that when you see a decimal number, you are always going to run, run down. That's pretty much how I like to look at it. And let's do another one. Let's say flow of 8.9. Well, this right here, you run down, which is 8, like that. Well, well, if you have the flow of an integer already, let's say 6, this right here is still 6. This is good. It's slightly trickier when you have negative numbers, but it's okay, you can handle it. Let's say you have the flow of 1.2, but that's negative right here. Well, you don't just bring the negative out and then do the flow of past the 1.2. It's not like that. The answer to this, you have to use the definition, which is the biggest integer that's less than or equal to negative 1.2, which is negative 2. Well, let's look at the number line real quick. Right here is 0, right here is negative 1, right here is negative 2. You are talking about negative 1.2, which is right here. This is negative 1.2. The biggest integer that's less than uh, negative 1.2. You pretty much just look at to your left, which is negative 2 right here, just like that, right? So that's pretty much it for the flow function. Now, to integrate this, unfortunately, this right here, it's not a continuous function. So we have to do it by, you know, by pieces. And the best way to do it is to look at the graph of y equals the flow of x. So I will put it down right here for you guys. Well, I need to go from 0 to 4, so let me just label this right here, right here. And I will just also label the y values, 1, 2, 3, 4. And yeah, let's graph y equals ab not an absolute value. It kind of lo looks like it, but it's not. Well, the flow of x. So what you can do real quick is that you can just put down some x values and also some uh, ab not absolute value, the flow of x real quick, right? So when x is 0, flow of 0 is 0, that's good. So you have a 0, and that's a solid circle because you include a 0, 0 here. But if x is 0 0.1, you plug into here the flow of 0 0.1, this is still 0. So when x is 0 0.1, you are still right here. And in fact, any values in between of 0 and something less than 1, such as 0 0.999, but let's just put on 0 0.9, the flow of 0 0.9, this is still equal 0. So <laughs> when you have 0 0.99, you still have this. In fact, you have a horizontal little segment right here. However, once you hit exactly 1, well, the flow of 1 is exact 1 because it's an integer. There is a jump from 1 to 1.1, 1, 1, 1 right here. So be sure you open a circle right here, and then this right here, there's a jump, and since you have 1, 1, this circle here is actually enclosed. So you pretty much just enclose the left end point all the time, and you keep the right end point open. So, if you do the same thing, next you can just do whatever you want, let's say 1.7. You take the flow of 1.7, this is going to give you 1. This is 1.7, right here, and then you have 1. So once again, on this interval, the flow function is pretty much a constant, it's horizontal. Except for when you hit 2, you open a circle here, because you have to jump to 2. And once you jump to 2, this is the closed circle, and then so on. So I'll just do it real quick for you guys. And when you have 3, it's closed circle, and then you have this. And when x is 4, you jump to 4, and this is a closed circle, and then of course you can continue. And it's pretty much like a stair, all that. Now, the best part is here. To integrate this, remember, we are still trying to find the area. Don't let the open circles bother you. From here to here, there's no area under the curve, right, the curve. Now, we are just going to find the area right here. The base right here is 1, the height right here is also 1, 1 times 1 for the area right here is just 1. Next, you find the area under this curve, from here to here. 
the base is 1, the height is from 1 to 2, so the area here is 2. And then next, you have this rectangle. This right here, base is 1, the height is from here to here, which is 3, so 1 times 3 is 3. So, what you're doing is, yes, 1 plus 2 plus 3. And yes, this calculus question, we don't have any hardcore integral equations. It's just that you have to know the definition of two and how things work right here. And of course, 1 plus 2 plus 3, I believe the answer is 6. That's it.